Norm McGuire for SevereMMA.com with a victorious Mr. Norman Park um, coming off that win over Miss Paul Brown. I was going to say um, the lightweight champion. Obviously, um, you missed weight yesterday, championship weight. Just speak to me first about that. What happened to that whole situation, Norman? Um, right, okay. <clears throat> I said this two times before already, so um, to clarify that there, I've never missed weight ever before, yeah. ever. You know, I respect that. If I'm dying, I'll make the weight every time. UFC nine fights, Ultimate Fighter <clears throat> on the button every time. One fight after the UFC ACB on the button every time. Why? Because it's not like I'm travelling 80 mile up the road to jump and try and weigh in like from 9 to 11 in the morning. I was up at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock early on Thursday morning cutting weight in my granny's bath. You know, and I had my cousin trying to like, wrap the towels. He never had a clue what the fuck I was doing. He was like doing all that shit for me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was sending him so why the fuck did I even have to do this? Why, why, why did I not just have a hotel up there so I could just like jump out of my room, the hot bath, go up the stairs, shake the official scale, come back down, well, and point it off, off, jump into the bath again, and then it would have been done, no problem. So I you try and calculate that up, up at seven o'clock in the morning, cutting nine pound, and then, and then, it was like 10 o'clock, this is Norman, we need you up here. So half 10, I was out of the bath. I weighed 155.2 in my scales. Yeah. So I thought, right, wrap up. I was still sweating. I wasn't even dying. I wasn't even like getting a tight or anything. I was fresh, probably the freshest I've ever been. So uh, I jumped, you know, got a lift up and uh, I arrived there like a bit late. It was like a half past, you know. So I can see from their point of view, oh, you should have been here like before that. But think about it. What if I had been there before and I was still off weight, uh, you know, like whatever off. There wasn't any baths or anything there. Like, you know, there was any, I know Paul had the same problem. Paul was in one place and then that never worked, the sauna. They had to go and then they ended up going somewhere else to, to use a sauna to cut the weight. So there was a bit of miscommunication there. So some of it's, you know, some of it's, you know, Obama's fault because, you know, the people who were organising that side yeah. of things, not, not, not the, the, the real people up, up top, but the people who were organising the hotels and stuff, I think they should have had a hotel for me at least because, you know, main event and then the you know the traveling trying to cut the weight so some some people got to understand my side of the of story so that's where it comes from does that leave you've won, you've won fight i think as you said there a moment ago left in your obama contract does that leave you sarah taste in your mate now no not really no I, you know i said before anyway i didn't really care about the belt man i you know the belt's nice looks good and stuff but i seriously do not care about the belt i said to my coach you say oh do i fight for the belt i ah, well i'll just fight i didn't really care about the belt you know it doesn't really yeah, fair enough, it's like an achievement in a way, but I think belts only really mean much to you. You've got to like f beat everyone in that top, up in the top, like say like wherever, what promotion you're in, top 10 fighters, you've got to beat yeah. everyone there to actually solidify yourself as a true champion. So for me, it's not really, it doesn't really mean much at the minute unless you beat everyone in that promotion, that promotion's rankings for me. So. It is what it is, but you know, I, I'm not really worried about the belt. I got another fight here, and then I don't know where I know where it could happen, but I, I can't say on camera here. But we'll see what oh, happens. You can if you want, like. like you know who you remind, you know who you remind me on the, the Irish Gareth Davies. G Gareth loves I me. Think, I think you're growing the hair. I think there's your jealousy here. So there is. No, I'm gonna get a mullet cut in. I think there's a jealousy here. I think we should set set a bout up between <laughs> the Irish Gareth Davies and the English Gareth Davies. Well, he won't have me on the show again after you just said that. So. Ah well, he caught my foot. He says my, you know, he said, is it? He says my coach looks like one of them orcs from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so I told Rodney, and then he was like, uh, what was that he says about Rodney? Oh, Rodney, I never said nothing, mate. No, I never said anything. I was like, ah, you like fucker. Norman, but the fight itself, um, you know. A lot of people, you seem to slow in the fight. I was quite yep, surprised. Yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, first time I've really seen you slow down. I actually had a score probably 29, 28 to Paul. Uh, I thought he did a lot of work off his back in the second round uh, and won the third. How did you break down the fight? I thought, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I see your point, yeah, but I felt that um, I know Paul worked very hard off his back for the submission and stuff like that, but ultimately I was controlling it and stuff like that. and. I would land a couple of shots. Not, I never landed too many shots from the top, but I, I tried my best. But I had to respect this game. You can't elevate too much up to throw ground and pound and create a scramble because I knew in the scramble it's dangerous. You know, people don't understand to the to the normal you know MMA fan, just a general fan, they didn't understand that. But the real hardcore fans will know that that's his game. Heel hooks from yeah, half guard from anywhere. So, and there was a time he almost had it on. So, I knew that I couldn't 
How close was it? Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard my knee crunching a wee bit, but I don't think it's hurt, but that was a, definitely close. So I felt like I controlled the majority of the first two rounds, so um, he landed some big par shots and stuff like that there. And <coughs> third round, definitely all his. I had him the third round for sure. You could you could, possibly, you could possibly give it a 10-8 round. I became a wee bit complacent on my back there, thinking, ah... Um, my, my gas tank's a wee bit sloppy here. Yeah, what is the issue with the gas tank? You said you said that a number of times. I don't know. I just kind of like since the UFC, I just kind of. But I never really. I never really. I'm not is it motivation. I'm not all disrespecting them the opponents that I fought. Like my coach will tell you. Um, I, I didn't really put the time in that, that I should have done for them last two fights. I put a bit more sparring into the fight with Paul Ribbon, but the fight with Andrew Fisher, I just. Um, I never really, I didn't even spar at all basically, I just yeah. wrestled, you know, the whole time and that, that you can't do that man, because you get someone who's, you know, he sees my name, but I'd never looked at it like that, he's like, fuck, if I beat him, that puts me up in yeah, there, so yeah. that's the way I saw it, it's nothing the day with me, like, um, that, that my gas tank's bad or anything like that there, there's certain times, you know, in the fight it can get tough and stuff, but I think, you know, the, the weight cut's tough as well, like 15 pound of water in 24 hours is not a good, good thing, so possibly get the weight a bit lower coming into the camp as well it makes you know fresher and stuff so I knew I knew in the third round I seen like his corner his corner was saying you need to you need to win this fight here you need to finish him so he was coming hard so it, it, you know I'm always in the fight but you know I'm I'm always there I, I didn't quit man you know he was hitting shots and stuff like that I'll never quit I'll never cowered up or if I'm tired and hide away and just say right fuck it just accept defeat that's not me, because too many fuckers out there would love to see that, but put them in there and let them get smacked a couple of times around the head and let them curl up in their ball, because me, I, I, I didn't do that. I'm there the whole time. I'll stay to the death. I'll get beat up. I'll still stay there. You know, I hadn't been finished in my, mm -hmm. last, in my last fights. I know I hadn't finished and stuff like that, but I'm working on that, you know, so fuck it. Definitely, you know, very tough fight, obviously, with Paul. Tough, gritty guy like yourself. Um, what, what's next for you going to end the line, then? Don't know. I don't know. We've just got to see what happens. Um, I know Bama's got a show coming up, <clears throat> and uh, it's and like soon, you know, like a few months or something like that there. But I know where it is, so I can't tell you, you know, because Garth goes and blinders. Garth goes and blinders. No, nah, no, nah, I thought it was there, but it's somewhere. Garth tells everything, you know. He tells tales, so. Um, I'm not Garth, by the way. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Niall. <laughs> so, um, no, I don't know. I, I just don't know, man. Just uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. So just never. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. Motivation is not the biggest thing at the minute. So why? Why is that though? Why is I the, don't know. I don't know. Just, just feel uh, flat. No, I think aye, I do. I'm not going to lie about it. Like, um, wh why lie about it? Because you can see it in some of the fights. But it's uh, <clears throat> you think to yourself. You know, people will say to you, oh, what if you were motivated? You'd be better than that, but maybe you'll not be, you know. I don't know, maybe it's just, I think the whole UFC just thing just pissed me clean off, you know. You sign a contract and then you lose one fight to, like, a legit boy. A uh, close fight and then you get released for that. So I thought that was just... Yeah, well, I, don't, yeah. I thought that was just pure yeah, bullshit, you know. And do you know what? I actually think there's more to it, you know, from what I heard. I think there's actually more to that, so... You know, what, what's, what is more? I don't know, no, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't really want to talk about that, but... Um, <clears throat> You never know, maybe. It's not the end of the world. There's a whole time. I can go and earn some good money on other promotions, believe you me. But, but are you going to do that if, if you're feeling flat? Are you, are you still going to fight on? I'll still fight. Oh, fuck. I, I'll still fight. And t unless something comes up like like a good big money fight, I'll fucking take that. That's it. You know, let, I'll, I'm going to sell myself. I'll just use what I hate. Like, you know, just like an old fucking hooker. Just sell yourself like, and use what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to say yeah, that, but yeah. you know, I'm going to sell myself like, and, and, and use my name to try and get some good big fight somewhere. So yeah. I don't care if it's, you know, going into some, some, you know, somebody else's country to fight them, like they're a champion or something. But I didn't really mind that. So whatever, if that happens, then. But you know, the thing is, the, the thing I'm happy about, the, you know, that my teammates, you know, people. It was always just me up north and stuff like that there. But I says a couple of years ago that these young boys are getting better because you know. They're, they're, they're catching on to the stuff I'm doing, you know, and obviously I'm training with them and it's making them better the whole time. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad, like Andy Young, just people don't understand. Yeah. They look at they look at the regular and think 10 and 8, oh, well, shit, you know. <laughs> the people thought Norman Park 5, Paul Rebbin, oh, he's regular, shit. They just think regular, 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 but that means nothing, man, absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. But Andy Young, just performance. This is to him, this boy, right, this boy, all he has, one left punch, there's no power in the left punch, and one front teep, front teep, that's it. He just plays with the right hand, he's got a left hand, that's it. But if I don't land, he's got nothing, he's got nothing. He stayed to the outside, your boy's lead foot, and your boy was kind of shocked after the first round. So that's what happens when you, you know, run your mouth too much. 
I think he thought he was like McGregor a wee bit, like but without the power. Mm, he had mm. the same style, mm. like the same style, uh, but without the power. So I, I think that I think he just spoke up too much and they underestimated Andy. And I knew Andy like he trained at Alliance with me, and he just like he, he beat Ronnie in my eyes. Yeah, he beat yeah. Ronnie in my eyes. So I don't think Ronnie wants to fight him again. Definitely. So. I think he's the champion. He's got like four or five belts. So I would not be surprised if the UFC give him an opportunity. He's determined. His head's in the right mind. He's like, he's at peace with himself in martial arts. You can see that, that he's focused, you know, and then you look at me, it's just like, oh, well, fuck it, you know, but he's, uh, he's in the zone, you mm. know, and that's where you need to be to fight at a level like that there. So I hope he gets a chance to fight somewhere like that. Definitely hope it, because I'll definitely give a shout out. And race, yeah, you know, they need They need some numbers in that division. They do, yeah, like, and he's a flyweight. It's like, it's not, it's not they'd release like some, what, who was it, Horiguchi, man. What, how do you release someone who's like seven and one in the UFC? Crazy. And you know, Crazy. seven, one in the UFC top, well, what is he top, like four or five in the world? There's some, there's more to it, man. Maybe contract issues or something, but there's definitely more to that. I don't know what's going on there, but, mm. But I hope, like Andy and, and Reese, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm disappointed with Reese and I, I feel sorry for him in a way because... Um, there looked to be something uh, playing on his mind, no, maybe no, something. No, it's not that. Reese was not well today, man. He, he came up, you know, and he was sitting in the corner in the back. He was just kind of rubbing his stomach and stuff. So I knew there was something wrong with him. He says he didn't feel well. And I know Reese. I spar with him. He's a fucking killer, man. Yeah, He's 100%. deadly, you know. And, like, if you clench up with him, if I clench up, he'll break away and, and look, they land heavy shots. So, and he looked sloppy there, you know, and I thought definitely that he's not on point tonight he's, he's not well so people can say all the other shit and stuff like that and say I this and that about him but the young lad wasn't well but do you know what there's nothing going to break him maybe straight back again and do you know what I like about him he listens he's got respect and he understands I like people who I can like tell stuff to and they respect that and they're not like oh I know everything I don't need to listen to what you're trying to tell me so I respect that and fair play you know I feel sorry for Big Glenn also but you know you're not there so you know it's like heel hook or whatever fair play you know so Norman appreciate the time congratulations on the victory tonight buddy thanks mate thank you appreciate that